Hello everyone, welcome back to the BMAT tip series, where I talk to the camera to give you tips on how to do well in the BMAT. My name is Ale, I'm a fifth year medical student at Cambridge University, and in this video we're going to be talking about the approach to section 2. Now feedback from the last video said that it was a little bit too long, so instead of doing a really long video where we talk about all of section 2, we're going to be splitting it up into different bite-sized chunks. So if you like watching YouTube videos in the toilet like I do, you won't have to be in there for very long. So let's dip our toes into the world of Section 2. I'll start by giving you a brief overview of what Section 2 involves, then we'll talk about timing for a bit, and then I'll talk about how I would prepare for Section 2 if I were taking the BMAT this year. So let's start with a brief overview. Section 2 has 27 questions and lasts 30 minutes. This comes out to about one minute per question. We'll talk more about the timing in just a moment. Section 2 covers an even split of biology, chemistry, physics and maths, with biology being the easiest and maths probably being the hardest. The standard of Section 2 is GCSE or O-level difficulty, but the problem is that the questions could be taken from any of the exam boards, not just the one that you've done. So back in my day, about 6-7 years ago now, when I was preparing for the BMAT, I got loads of CGP revision guides from all the different exam boards and ripped out the pages that were relevant to the BMAT questions. Thankfully, you don't have to do that because there is now an official Section 2 Assumed Knowledge Guide, which you can freely access online. Um, and I'll do another video to talk about how to make the most use of this guide. So that's Section 2. It's essentially an even split of biology, chemistry, physics and maths. 27 questions, 30 minutes. Let's talk about timing. The timing of Section 2 is actually really tough. Uh, you get about one minute per question and this is generally not enough time. So keeping to time is super, super important. If you're finding that you're spending more than a minute on a question, you should just guess an answer and move on. In fact, if you recognize from the start that a question is gonna take longer than a minute, you should just guess and move on anyway without even attempting it. Every year on our courses, we tell students about the importance of the timing in section two and how you should ruthlessly guess and skip questions. But every year we get emails from students saying that they ran out of time and had to leave five questions blank. I can give you quite a lot of tips for the timing in each of the various different questions, but this video would then get too long. So instead we're gonna split that up into the subject specific videos which are coming in the next few days. So do keep a lookout for those. So that's timing done. Let's talk a little bit now about how to prepare for Section 2. If I was preparing for Section 2 to take the BMAT this year, here is how I would do it. Firstly, I would teach myself all of the science that I didn't already know. I would focus especially on physics if I'm not doing physics at A-level. I would not make the big mistake of skipping the physics questions completely just because I'm not doing it as an A-level subject. To teach myself the science, I would use the official Section 2 Assumed Knowledge Guide, and I would find a Section 2 syllabus on the internet. Uh, there is one conveniently linked in the description of this video, which would tell me which topics have been historically asked about in BMAT Section 2 papers. I would prioritize the topics mentioned in this syllabus, and depending on how much time I had left until the BMAT, I might want to teach myself the rest of the stuff in the Section 2 Assumed Knowledge Guide. Having taught myself all of the science I need to know, I would then do lots and lots of practice questions. The easiest way for me to do that would be to go on a website that I made called BMAT Ninja, where I would find the past 15 years worth of BMAT Section 2 papers, along with a load of other questions written by Oxbridge medical students. I would practice loads and loads and loads of those questions, and then when I was confident I'd practice enough questions, I'd want to do the last five or six years worth of actual BMAT past papers, and I'd want to do those under strict time conditions, making sure I was sticking to the 30 minutes I'm allowed for section two. I would then check my answers, and if I got a lot of questions wrong, I might want to look at the solutions again on BMAT Ninja, um, or I might ask a teacher or ask a friend to give me some tips about where I went wrong. So that's how I would prepare for section two if I were taking the BMAT this year. And I would suggest that if you're a bit unsure about section two, you might want to follow a similar trajectory. So that concludes today's video. Um, I've tried to keep it brief, but this video is still probably quite long. We've talked about the content of section two. We've talked a little bit about the timing, and I've given you some thoughts about how I would prepare for section two mostly involving teaching myself the science I need to know and then doing lots of practice papers. Coming up very soon will be videos on physics, biology, chemistry and maths where I'll be giving you specific advice on how to tackle those sections and some tips you can use to be efficient with your time, which is the most important thing for section 2. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you might want to subscribe to the channel if you like uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!